Bhagavad Gita, verse 3.39. O Arjuna, the true knowledge of the wise living entity is covered by his eternal enemy in the form of lust. This lust burns like fire and can never be satiated. Sar Ardavarshini, lust is indeed ignorance for all jivas. As Sri Bhagavan is explaining in this verse, beginning with Avritam, the desire to enjoy the sense objects has been described as the eternal enemy, therefore it must be destroyed by all means. Understand that Kama Rupa, the form of lust, means that ignorance is non different from lust. It is indeed ignorance that envelops the real nature of the jiva. Here, the word cha has been used to mean like, just as fire cannot be satiated by pouring ghee onto it. Similarly, lust cannot be fulfilled by enjoying the sense objects. It is said in Srimad Bhagavatam 9.19.14 Najatu kamaha kamanam Upa Bogena Shamyati Havisha Krishna Vartmeva Buya Eva Bivardate. Fire is not satiated by ghee, rather it increases. Similarly, by enjoying sense objects, the thirst for sense enjoyment increases more and more. It does not become pacified. Sar Ardavajni Prakashikariti Lust is the root cause of lamentation and distress and has been compared to fire. Srimad Bhagavatam 7.9.25 Lust can never be satisfied by enjoying the sense objects. It is like a fire that cannot be extinguished by drops of honey in the form of momentary satisfaction. Srimad Bhagavatam 9.6.48 The sage Sobhari Muni was not able to attain peace by profusely enjoying sense objects, just as fire is not pacified when drops of ghee are poured on it. Sivatu Varsha Puganme Urvasya Adara Shavam Natripyati Atma Buhu Kamu Vanir Ahutibir Yata Srimad Bhagavatam 11.26.14 Even after I had served the so-called nectar of the lips of Urvashi for many years, within my heart my lusty desires kept rising again and again and were never satisfied, just like fire, which can never be extinguished by the oblations of ghee poured into its flames. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur quotes Krishna as saying, This lust is indeed ignorance for the jivas, and is their eternal enemy. It covers the conscious jivas like an overwhelming fire. Just as I, Sri Bhagavan, am a conscious being, similarly the jiva is also a conscious entity. The difference between my nature and that of the jiva is that I am infinitely conscious and omnipotent, whereas the jiva is atomically conscious and can only act because of the energy I give him. The eternal occupation of the jiva is to be my eternal servant. This is called prema or nishkama jiva dharma. The eternal, selfless, unalloyed function of the living entity. Every conscious being by his constitutional nature is endowed with free will. It is therefore by his own free will that he is my eternal servant, according to the decree to which he properly uses this free will, he can act as my eternal servant. 
The misuse of that pure free will is called ignorance, avidya, or lust, karma. Those jivas who do not serve me by correctly using their free will have to accept lust, an enjoying mood, which is the perverted form of the jiva's pure state, prema. As they become more and more covered by degrees of this lust, they gradually become like inert matter. This is called karma bandana, the bondage of the living entity due to karma. It is also called samsara yatana, the journey of agonizing birth and death.